Hey guys, and I'm so excited because this is basically the real first video of my Road to Entrepreneurship series. Today I'm just sharing the top 10 things I learned last week as I started doing some research because I think number one was drowning out the voices which you heard last video. Because I think the first thing before you start anything is knowing that there's gonna be people that tell you you're being dumb and that you shouldn't do it and you have to drown out those voices. And then I realized number two is just to start researching Searching and just start realizing what do I need to do? What does it take to start your own business? And so some of these things I'm going to be saying are coming from the as a private practicing dietitian. And then some things I say throughout the series are just going to be general to any entrepreneurs or wanting to do your own thing. So the top 10 things I've learned from just researching and listening to just businessmen and looking at websites on private practicing dietitians. These are the top 10 things that I need to do or that I have done this week. <laughs> So the first one that I should have done a long time ago, so I almost shouldn't admit that I need to do this, but I just did it last week, get professional liability insurance. I have always had people sign waivers as I've worked with them in the past, but I realized, especially as a private practicing dietitian, I need professional liability insurance. So I just registered for that and got that last week. Number two, this is for um, more dietitians and stuff, but you have to figure out, okay, so where are you gonna do it? Are you gonna rent a space? Are you gonna work in a gym? Are you gonna do it strictly online? And so for me, I'm kind of doing both the online thing worldwide, but I'm also working with Titus Sports Academy in Tallahassee, and I'm going to be doing in-person, one-on-one kind of consultations with either their clientele or people that I just wanna bring in. Um, they're just letting me do whatever I want and giving me my space for free so that's really cool so that is so you have to figure out what space you're gonna be using number three was a question of do I want to register as an LLC um, after some research I don't think I want to do that right now but it will be beneficial in the future so I'm probably gonna keep that in the back of my mind Number four, one of the biggest things I've seen across the board is having a good website and then having social media and being on social media with your business. And so thankfully, because of having a blog and being a blogger since 2013, I have all of that stuff going already. Um, I created my new website, saragrayspan.com. Um, if you guys haven't seen that with all my services and everything. And then also social media, I've started opening up my personal Instagram, Sarah Gray Span, because I'm gonna start sharing more of my life journey on there. But I also have, of course, the Freshman Healthy Instagram and the Freshman Healthy blog and Freshman Healthy everywhere on Pinterest and Twitter and everything like that. So I think I'm good in that respect, but that is key. And I also have a blog post on how to create your first website or blog. So I'll link that below in case you do need to do that. Okay, so number five was having a financial and budget sheet, like spreadsheet. So this is something I've been really bad about in the past, and I'm not a business or finance major, so I really don't understand a lot of that stuff, but I do know it's key to keep track of all of it, and your, to keep track of your expenses, keep track of your income, keep track of what your net income is, and so I'm starting to do that and put that all together in a spreadsheet, Excel sheet, and have it all pretty. Haven't really done that yet, but it's it's in the process. But there are a lot of like templates online that you can just download and use. Number six, another thing for kind of just private practicing dietitians, but also maybe for you, um, as a dietitian and not just a nutritionist or health coach, I am allowed to take insurance from people. But that opens a whole nother can of worms of just dealing with insurance companies and stuff, and I don't think I'm ready for that yet. So after kind of thinking about it, I'm just not taking insurance right now for at least the first year as I figure it all out and get everything else running, and then maybe I'll open up to that, but I'm not sure I will. Next is having just like handouts and paperwork ready. So I have thankfully worked as a nutritionist and sports nutritionist with Titus Sports Academy for the last year now. 
so, or I guess six months. So I was already having to build a lot of handouts and paperwork from scratch. And so I have, you know, an initial client assessment and questionnaire. I have a three day um, food diary journal template. I have, you know, just like pre and post workout food handouts. I have um, high fiber foods, high protein foods, high, uh, just all the different kinds of like handouts you could want for nutrition reasons. And then I have, you know, some uh, assessments and questionnaires for initial clients and um, bi-weekly check-ins and stuff like that that I've already built. But you should definitely have that if you're doing any kind of consulting. And then last thing I realize and that we all need to realize if we're wanting to be businessmen or women is it all comes down to where is your income coming from? Because at the end of the day, if you're not making money, it's only a hobby, it's not a business, and it's not gonna be your career. So throughout my blogging, and since 2013 when I started blogging, I have been able to find ways to make money monthly, but it's always just been a part-time, and I've never really pursued making money very much because I just really enjoyed it, and it was just a fun side thing on like the side with college and as being a full-time student intern but now it's like oh I'm trying to make this my career I need to make an income <laughs> and I need to make enough income so ways that I'm already having income just as a blogger and not even offering my consulting services I do work with some clients already but um, that's gonna be a more of a majority part of my income as I look into the future but right now, a lot of my income is coming from working with brands, you know, one-time posts, one-time videos, things like that. And then also long-term partnerships are key to secure. If you have any kind of social media following, um, I only decided to work with two companies long-term for 2017 because of, you know, really wanting to give my time and energy to them and not wanting to take on too much as I was still gonna be a full-time intern and full-time student for the first six months of it and it was the best decision of my life and that secured like 12 to 15 grand right off the back for 2017 so that was nice to like already have that set and know that that is gonna be part of my 2017 income and then work from there with one-time partnerships and stuff with different companies like you saw me take over the date company's Instagram for the day and stuff like that little things like that that I do monthly also bring in another like one to two grand a month so that's kind of like my current income and then also affiliate links like that's something I haven't really promoted very much so I'm gonna start doing that but look in my book of course so looking forward along with that kind of income that's already coming in I want to offer more more consulting services now that I'll be a dietitian. Um, I do have hopes for another book in the future, but I also really want to create an online course for you know breaking up with dieting and just healing your mindset from all of that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things in my mind to pursue in the future, but right now I think the main sources of my income are going to be coming from consulting and working one-on-one -on -one with clients and group education sessions at Titus Sports Academy, and then also of course my side work with social media and influencing, you know, reading and writing for publications and stuff like that. So, two last things that are on the agenda. Do I need to register my business? That's something I read online from one person's blog and I need to figure out if I need to do that. And number two is just creating a separate business account, like financially, like do I need to create a separate bank account for my business and that's something I think I do need to do but haven't really figured that part out yet so there are 10 things that I'm have worked on or will be working on and where my income is coming from I have this on a blog post so I'm linking that down below if you want to check that out and so I don't know this series is just gonna be going with it trying to see what works what doesn't what's popular what's not so I might just leave this kind of detailed stuff for my blog posts for people that really want the nitty-gritty stuff and then do YouTube videos on life lessons and failures and successes throughout my weeks and you know daily vlogs like as I can or I might do this nitty-gritty stuff on here I don't know you guys let me know as this keeps continuing what you want to see and what you don't want to see like you won't hurt my feelings I just want to know because I don't know which part of it I should just keep on video which I should just keep on blog or if I should just be doing both on both so <laughs> with all that being said thanks for staying tuned to this longer video of mine of my first 
video of the Road to Entrepreneurship series. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I want feedback in the comments below, and I also wanna know what you're gonna be working on this week if you're in the whole entrepreneur world and have any of these things that you need to work on too. So until next time, bye guys.